This episode is sponsored by Hook Relay. If you integrate your apps with third parties like Stripe, GitHub, Slack, or Trello, you'll want quality webhooks that's more than just sending a JSON payload to your customer's URL. Hook Relay is a service that makes sending and receiving webhooks reliable, secure, and transparent automatically. You can watch your traffic, inspect each request, and much more. It's like X-ray vision. Without Hook Relay, you have no idea of how many requests you're processing. Of course, if your app or your integration partners are being flaky, you'll love the peace of mind that comes with knowing that no matter what happens, Hook Relay will make sure that your webhooks are delivered. Go to hookrelay.dev to get started and get reliable webhooks for your app in minutes, not days. In this episode, we're going to have a look at the bootstrap modals, and the steps should also be applicable for applications that are running ES Build, along with Tailwind CSS. But the basic idea is whenever we want to go to edit a record, we would want a modal to pop up. And I've been guilty of this in the past, where for each record, I would go ahead and render out the modal. So even if the user doesn't click on the button or link that would then trigger it, it still gets rendered on the page. And while that may not be a big deal for just a few records, it does start becoming a much bigger deal as the application grows because you're spending a lot of CPU cycles generating those and then a lot of bandwidth sending it over the wire. So instead, whenever we click one of the edit buttons, it'll launch the modal, we can make our changes, and then we can update the project. Likewise, we'll also be implementing a new project modal where we can create it, it creates successfully, and then it'll take us back and we're also going to look at creating another one but having some form validation. So we get a form validation error has occurred, we have to address this issue, and then we will be able to create the record. And the way we're going to handle this is whenever you come to this page, there will not be any modal code loaded. Instead, when we click the edit button, it'll make a request back to our Rails application. The Rails application will send back the modal information, and then we'll use some JavaScript to launch it. Likewise, for a new project, it makes a request back to the Rails application. It then sends us back this information and we display it. And this is going to be so much more efficient because if we did have hundreds of records on this page, we wouldn't want to necessarily render all those modals because realistically, people would never click on them. So we'll start this off generating a scaffold for our project. We'll just have a name and description attribute and then we can go ahead and run Rails DB migrate to migrate the database. And so if we come under the index actions view, we can see that we have our edit record. And the idea here is we would want to provide some backwards compatibility if for whatever reason the end user's browser is not working properly. For example, they have JavaScript disabled, then we would want to take them to the edit page instead of launching the modal. So with a test project here, I'm going to hit the edit button and we're going to look at the response we can see that it took us to the edit projects page and it came over as an HTML. However, the problem here is that we're going to want to make this a turbo stream and there's actually a couple of ways we can do this. However, I want to show you just a couple of different ways. So if we have a format and then we can add a turbo underscore stream here and if we save the file, if we come back and now if we hit the edit, we do get an error but you can see now we get a turbo stream response. However, there's actually a big problem with doing it like this, and the issue is at the time of this recording with iOS Safari, this will actually try to download the page instead of directing us back to the application with a TurboStream response. It would still make the request, but it also triggers a download, and it's really weird. So I actually don't want to do it this way at all. And without adding complications to this view or the responding views, I don't want to make this a turbo frame tag just for this functionality. So instead, I'm going to create a stimulus controller and I can do that with a bin rails generate stimulus and the name of the controller that I'm going to create is just called turbo. And by using this task, that'll automatically call the stimulus manifest update. So if we come into our JavaScript controllers index, it's automatically added in here. We don't have to do that manually. So within this controller, we're essentially just going to be adding it to that edit link. So we can add the data controller turbo, 
So whenever this edit link appears, it's going to have that data controller turbo, but it's not going to be listening on there. And I don't want to clutter up the view here with having this data controller turbo, but then also having a data action turbo and then click event on this line just for this simple functionality. There's actually a neat trick that we can do here. So when this initializes, we can call this dot element. We can set the attribute. We want to set the data dash action and we want to set it to a click event and taking us to the turbo controller and the click action. So then we can create this click event. We can prevent the default. And this is just so whenever we click on the link, it's not going to adhere whatever that link was actually going to do. So instead, we could just set a variable. We'll call it this URL. We'll get this dot element, and then we'll get the attribute, and we want the href. So already, we are kind of painting ourselves in a little box here because using this turbo controller, it is going to rely on whatever we're adding it to to actually have an href tag which is just the URL that it's going to be pointing to or the URI it'll be pointing to. And from there, we could call a fetch. We'll call this dot URL, and then we can pass in some headers. And the header that we want to pass in is an accept. And then we just need to pass through the turbo stream request format. And once this is done, we can then have it then. We'll get our response. And we want to make sure that we have some text here. Then with this HTML that we're getting back, we can then call the turbo and then the render stream message and we can pass in the HTML. And by doing this, we make the turbo stream request back to our Rails application. We get our response and then we call on the browser side the turbo render stream message to basically whatever is in that response. Let's go ahead and execute it. So this turbo controller will basically be looking for any kind of turbo stream replace, append or something like that and then it'll follow through as it normally would. So coming back to our application now, we can refresh the page. We can inspect our element to see that we had the data controller turbo, but then also we had the data action click turbo click. So the stimulus controller did initialize. It did add the click in. And when we click on it, we don't see anything pop up here because we had the prevent default. But then if we scroll through the logs, we can see that it came over as a turbo stream and we still got the same error message saying that it's missing a format. And so I don't actually want to do anything in the controllers for this project, but instead, whenever we click on that edit link, instead of taking us to the edit.html.erb, it'll take us to the edit.turbo underscore stream.erb. And just by simply having this, if we now edit, we see that we got our turbo stream response and we also did not get any errors. So that works. I'm just going to come into my layouts, the application layout, and I'm going to create a turbo frame tag. And I'm just going to call this tag the remote underscore modal, and I'm just going to leave it empty. And so now I know that no matter what page I'm on, I'm going to have this turbo frame tag remote modal available to me. So even in the turbo stream here, I can do a replace. So in the edit turbo stream ERB file, I'll have a turbo underscore stream dot replace and I want to replace the remote underscore modal and then we can create a block. And so now I need to render some kind of partial. So I'll render a partial and I'm going to take this to our projects and then we need some kind of partial here that we're going to be working with. So I'm just going to call this the form underscore modal and then I'll pass in the locals and that's going to be our project. And at this point in the edit action, we define the at project instance variable. So we'll just pass that in. And so then we need to create that file. So in the projects folder, we'll have the form modal partial here. And it'll be a html.erb. And essentially, I'm just going to copy the edit action here that's rendering out the form project. And I'm just going to put it in here temporarily. So now coming back here, we can see that we have our turbo frame tag. If we hit the edit button, it replaced the turbo frame tag now with the edit form. So now we just need to make this a modal. So in the form modal partial, I'm going to go ahead and create a turbo frame tag. This is going to be important because essentially whenever we click on that edit button, it's going to remove that turbo frame tag. And we want this functionality to persist 
if we then close the modal and then edit another record. And also the strange thing about this is whenever we are interacting with this remote modal turbo frame tag, and this may depend on your use case, but I'm going to go ahead and set the target to top. And the reason why I'm targeting the top is because whenever any kind of interaction happens within this frame tag, it's likely that I would want to send it to the top page. However, you may need to play around with your application to see if that's going to be the proper fit. And so essentially what we want to do is we want to put our modal code here and I'm just going to paste it in. And again, this is for a bootstrap project. So if you're using a different CSS framework that you would need to adjust this accordingly, but just within the modal body, we'll render out the project's form. So now if we come back and refresh, if we hit the edit button, you see that we still have our turbo frame tag. So if we had multiple targets or multiple projects and we're hitting the edit button, then we won't lose this turbo frame tag. Within here, we have the modal code and down in the body, we have the form for editing the project. And you may have noticed that the issue here now is that the modal didn't show. And so that's what we need to fix next. And I think the easiest way to do this is to take in the assumption if we are rendering this out on a page, then we want it to show immediately as soon as it's available. So I'm going to create another stimulus controller. I'm just going to call this the data controller and we'll set this equal to the modal. That does mean we need to run the rails generate stimulus and then the controller name. So we'll go ahead and do that. And if we edit this controller, we want to make it as simple as possible. So we're just going to set this dot modal is equal to a new bootstrap instance. This is going to be a modal for this dot element because the element that we are attaching it to is the modal itself. And then we can pass in whatever kind of options for this as we want. For example, if you want to take the keyboard and just disable that interactivity. And once we initialize it, we could call this dot modal dot show. And it is going to be important here that with this connect function, we also have a disconnect function. And the reason why this is going to be important is if we don't do this, then otherwise we could get into a situation where the modal is a nesting within a modal nesting into another one. And you'll just kind of see the background screen getting darker, darker and darker, or you'll have a situation where the modal just doesn't go away until you refresh the page. So when we disconnect, we're just going to call the height function on the modal. And so just by doing this, we have about 15 lines of JavaScript for this controller, and we have about 21 for the other one. And before we test this out, we do need to come into the JavaScript application.js file or wherever we're calling the import for bootstrap. Remember when I create this project, I am using ES build and I'm also using the CSS bundling with bootstrap. So this was automatically added in. And we just need to make sure that bootstrap is available at the window level. So I'm just going to call window.bootstrap and set it equal to bootstrap. Once we save this, ES build will rebuild the application JavaScript file. We can come back to our application and refresh, and we should then be able to edit and get the modal pop up. We can update the records and it works as we would expect. And the nice thing about all this is that we didn't have to touch the projects controller at all. The amount of code that we actually had to enter in, if we take aside the turbo controller and the modal controller, because this is going to be repeatable now. In the index page, we just had to add the data controller turbo. So as far as the existing code, that's all we had to add in. That'll make the turbo stream request to our Rails application. Because we're on the edit page, we just had to create the edit turbo stream ERB, where we're going to be replacing the remote modal that we created in the application layout. We're just going to render a partial and this partial is just triggering the stimulus controller modal. So this kind of functionality is really simple to create. So for example, if we just copy out the edit turbo stream and maybe we want to create it on the new action as well, all I have to do is just copy out that file, relabel it, and then come into the index action. We'll go down to the link where we are creating our new project. Since we do have a link to, and this is going to be an href, we can simply use our stimulus controller turbo. If we come back to the projects, we can click new project. And if we decided that we didn't want to create a new project, instead we wanted to edit the other project, that all works. So I'll just change this label. We'll come back 
and then we can create another project, come back, and it all works. So now let's talk about the validation because that's something that's always kind of been pretty difficult to manage is whenever we are making a JavaScript post back to the Rails application, especially in the context of a modal, and then having it render the response within there. So in our project model, I'm just going to paste in where we have a validates name that it's present and it's unique. So if we come back and try to create a new project, I'll just create it without a name and it works without us having to do anything else. If we try to create some kind of validation conflict with the uniqueness, then that pops up as well. And we didn't have to code anything else for this. It just works. If we give it a different name and then create the project, it takes us to the show page as we would expect. We can come back and it all works. So overall, I think that the amount of setup work that we're having to do here is very minimal for this kind of functionality. And just seeing how easy it is to add this functionality into another link, it was very simple. Again, all we had to add was the data controller turbo and then whatever controller action this was going to, we just had to make sure that we had an appropriate turbo stream response view here. And the turbo controller code is simple enough. If you do have some extra needs, you can easily manipulate this to do what you need. Same for the modal controller where we're simply just calling the bootstrap modal and making it show and then make sure that we hide it when it disconnects. If you do have any special requirements here as well, or if you had something else where maybe you didn't necessarily want to have a modal, but some other kind of interactivity to happen whenever the TurboStream is repainting the page with some new components, then you can do that as well. You could just have a different kind of stimulus controller that would then execute whatever kind of JavaScript that you needed. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.